In this video, I'm going to share with you guys my wheel settings that I use in Forza Horizon 4. Now with these wheel settings, it's going to help with drifting, it's going to help with grip driving, it's going to prevent a lot of fish tailing, and you're going to make it a very smooth drive and fun experience for you guys. So let's go ahead and jump into this video and I'll show you guys a complete guide on how to get these wheel settings. My name is Nikolai and this is Joyshift. I like to film and build cool cars in Forza Horizon 5. If you're new here, consider subscribing and hitting the bell icon so you can always be the first one to watch new videos. We're going to learn a whole lot about cars, we're going to custom them we're gonna drive them and just have a lot of fun with them let's go ahead and jump into this video my previous wheel settings video was on Forza Horizon 5 and I had a few comments mentioning that I should make these same wheel settings for Forza Horizon 4 now the thing with Forza Horizon 4 is that the wheel settings are a little bit different than Horizon 5 so I tried my best to match my Horizon 5 settings to have them in Horizon 4 because a lot of us still play Horizon 4 I think it's an excellent game it's super fun I like to switch between games mostly just because of the map you know having a different map I think is really fun to just mess around with and switch back and forth so these settings are going to feel a lot like what I had in Horizon 5. Now, if you haven't seen that video or haven't tried out those settings, it got a lot of positive feedback and people are really enjoying them. So what I went for was a very realistic feel. I don't want an F1 feeling steering wheel. I don't want one that just feels so heavy. It wobbles back and forth. Like if you're doing 60 miles per hour down the road, your wheel should not be wobbling back and forth. It should be straight. Maybe you feel something if you hit a bump, but it should not be wobbling back and forth and just uncontrollable. These settings are very smooth and I definitely do enjoy them. Also, it is worth noting that I am using a Logitech G920 wheel. Now this wheel settings guide will work for other wheels, not only in the Logitech family, like the G923, the G27, G920, all these other wheels but they will also work for other wheels like let's say in Thrustmaster or just other brands out there so these definitely will work well for all wheels but if you have a Logitech these will work perfect for you but if you have a different brand you may want to use these as a base and then make slight adjustments but a lot of people in my previous video who have other wheels also mentioned that these settings do work very well for them in Horizon 5 so I'm sure these are going to work very well for you in Horizon 4. Now let's go ahead and jump into these settings. Before we actually jump into the specific settings for the wheel we actually need to head over into difficulty settings because we have a few things we need to change in here if you don't have these already so for drive it's hard difficulty this doesn't really matter just do whatever you want but for braking i tend to have abs on i just like the way this feels but this is the really important part here steering you want to have steering on normal in horizon 5 i actually have my steering set to simulation for some odd reason i just feel like horizon 5 did it right with simulation feeling it feels like a real car it reacts like a real car everything just feels realistic but in this game everything just feels too snappy it does not respond like a real car i've drifted real cars I've driven real cars on track and it just does not feel realistic to me normal is what feels the most realistic so for steering I'm running normal but something to note is that if you want to try st simulation steering these wheel settings will also work on simulation so simulation will work for you if you do enjoy it but for me in my personal preference I'm running normal now traction control and stability control I have both of those off a lot of people were mentioning when they had these on it was kind of getting in the way of the way the steering wheel felt now I don't think this should necessarily impact the way the steering feels but a few people did mention that in the previous videos so I would recommend having these off because this is what I run now for shifting this is all personal preference this will not change the way the steering feels whatsoever you can run automatic manual or manual with clutch I like manual with clutch because I have my full sim setup where I have clutch pedals and a shifter so that's just what I like and then for the rest of these these really don't matter for wheel settings now let's go ahead and head over into control settings now this is very important I had a lot of people mention in my horizon 5 video that they weren't able to actually you get to the wheel settings so I'm going to show you guys specifically what you need to do in horizon 4 and this also will work in horizon 5 you need to make sure that when you're entering the wheel settings you're actually entering them from the wheel so right now I'm playing with my wheel and I'm actually going to my wheel settings from the wheel sometimes the game automatically assumes that the controller you're playing with so like whether it's an Xbox controller or your actual wheel setup it assumes that that's what you want to adjust so it's automatically going to set it to that but if you do enter from the wheel you will have these settings. So if you're entering this setting and you don't actually see a wheel setting in here, try entering from the wheel. If not, restart the game and it should work. But let's go ahead and head over into wheel and then we're gonna hit advanced. Now we can see all of our wheel settings. So first off, vibration. I have this off. I feel like vibration just feels very unrealistic. It just, it does, a, a real car steering wheel does somewhat vibrate, but it does not vibrate like the wheel does. It's a little bit odd, so I just have this off, but if you do like the way it feels, 
feel free to turn it on and experiment with what works for you. Now, invert vertical look, I have that off. Now, steering axis dead zone inside and outside. What do these settings do? So if you want a realistic feeling car, you want zero to 100 because this is gonna be 900 degrees of steering. If you set it to, let's say 60, it's not gonna be the full 900 degrees. Play around with this. If you don't want 900 degrees, you can make it you know, zero to 60, zero to 80, zero to 50, whatever you wanna do. But for my personal preference i want the closest setup i can get to a real car so i'm running zero to 100 because this is going to be full control over the steering wheel and i'm not going to feel limited in any way and also it's just going to respond like a real car if you have a shorter dead zone outside it's not going to feel like a real car steering linearity i have this set to 50 i would recommend leaving this at 50 i think if you go plus or minus anything it becomes less realistic because this is going to be the most linear setup you want it accurate in the center accurate in the far I don't think it's going to feel too realistic if you change it other than 50. I mean, like literally even 51, 49, I would not do that. I would recommend just sticking the 50, but if you find something that works for you and you like it, you know, go for it. But for my settings, 50 is just what works for me. Now, acceleration access dead zone inside and then deceleration access dead zone inside. I'm running these zero to 100, but understand that if you have the Logitech wheel, you're gonna actually have a rubber stopper in the brake pedal. So if you have this, it's actually not gonna allow you to press the brake fully to 100. So you're gonna, if you have zero to 100 settings and you press on the brake, you're gonna think, oh, why is the car not stopping? The, the brakes feel very weak. It's because you're actually not able to press them all the way. So you can do two things here. You can try and adjust the actual settings. So maybe try zero to 40, maybe even zero to 30 or 25, but you're gonna lose a lot of that distance in your brake pedal. So my recommendation would be to actually take apart this assembly and remove that rubber stopper because that rubber stopper is really originally designed to make it feel realistic you know when you press on the brake and there's you know all that pressure in the brake pedal it actually becomes a little bit stiffer but this one is just so stiff to the point where I cannot even press on the brake so I don't like it my recommendation is take that rubber stopper out it's not hard at all um, it seems a little bit overwhelming at first but once you do it it literally takes like 10 minutes and it's not that hard at all so I recommend taking it out because it will feel so much better and then you can actually have your brake access dead zone inside and outside from zero to hundred because this is what a realistic car is like and that is what we are going for now for clutch i am also running this zero to hundred because for the clutch pedal you can have more control over the car when you have more throw in the clutch pedal i just like having you know the the, the largest distance i can have because it gives you more control over the car now for e-brake i actually don't have an e-brake so mine is just a button so th for this case i have it set zero to hundred but if you have a physical e-brake that you can pump try something else um, but i still would recommend zero to 100 even if you did have a physical one now for vibration scale i have this set to 50 but it really does not matter because i have vibration turned off so it depends if you want vibration on mess around with this see what you like what feels good I don't like vibration at all because the vibe, the force feedback in the steering wheel is still going to provide a intensity that you will feel. So you don't even need vibration. You're going to feel much more realistic if you have it off. But like I said, if you do like the way it feels, feel free to have it on. Force feedback scale, I have this set to 41. Now, if you have this too high, your wheel is going to wobble back and forth and this does not feel good. So essentially what force feedback does is adjust the amount of feedback you feel in the wheel as you're turning. So a higher number is going to give you more force in the wheel. It's going to feel like it has more torque in it and it's just gonna feel you know a little bit higher in the intensity it's gonna be a little bit harder to turn things like that versus a lower one is gonna feel easier it's gonna feel more lightweight so I actually have mine set to 41 I have fine-tuned this and I find that this feels the absolute best 41 just I love it I don't get wobble in the wheel but it's enough force feedback that I can actually feel the wheel which is a super important thing so now we're going over into center spring scale now a real car does not actually have a center spring scale so what I've done here is I found a happy medium at 50 I think this is a optimal setup that it feels realistic enough that it responds like a real car but it's also interesting because a real car does not have a center spring scale so we have to kind of counteract this in the game because we don't actually have real physics applying onto the wheel it's all simulated so essentially what this center spring scale does is by having it at a lower value you may actually cause steering oscillation and this was a problem I was getting so my wheel was just wobbling back and forth I was getting a lot of fishtailing I didn't really 
enjoy it. So at 50, I find that it's perfect. Now, if you have it too high, it's just gonna feel too strong and it's gonna center way too powerful. And it just, that also doesn't feel realistic. So 50 is an optimal setup for what I like to do and just a realistic feel. Now for wheel damper scale, I like this at 27. I think 27 is optimal because what the wheel damper does is it actually dampens the effects you feel into the wheel. So a real car, I feel like has a lot of damper in it because essentially I feel like force feedback, if you had only force feedback on and wheel damper set to zero, it would kind of jump around. It wouldn't be smooth transitions in between, you know, bumps and things like that. But with wheel damper scale set to 27, you feel enough in the wheel that it actually is dampening all these effects and makes it a very smooth feeling drive. For my force feedback understeer, I have this set to five because when you have a lower value, you're gonna feel more loss of traction in the wheel. And I think this is very important. This is actually probably one of the most important settings in all of these settings because when you lose traction, you need to be able to feel it instantly. You need to feel it very well because if you're not able to feel that your car is losing Losing traction, you're not going to be able to have much control over it. So by having it at a low value, we're going to feel a lot of control over that understeer. So by having it at five, I think it's the perfect amount where we feel enough that it's a low value and we do actually feel the loss of traction in the wheel. Because in a real car, you can feel loss of traction through the wheel. So we want to make sure that we can have this in the game as well. Now, if I set this all the way up to, let's say 100 or even 95, you probably would not feel a lot of the traction. You know, like when you actually lose traction, you would not be able to feel Feel that if you had it too high so try five i think that's an optimal setup now for force feedback minimum force i like to have this also at five because the lower the value here the more linear response curve and a lighter feeling you're going to feel but the reason we have this so low is because when we're actually driving normally, let's say 30, 40, 50, 60 miles per hour through a road, just driving straight, holding a constant speed, in real life, your wheel is not gonna wobble back and forth. So we wanna mimic that in the game as well. By having the force feedback minimum force at five and then the force feedback scale at 41, we get a range from five to 41 where we can actually feel the force feedback. So having this wider range allows for us to have more control over the car. And I actually originally had this set to zero. So I had it set from zero and then my force feedback scale was 41 so i had a range of zero to 41 force feedback now with that setup i think it was a little bit too light um but you know i think five is definitely an optimal setup to where i still feel something in the wheel you know if i hit a bump even if i'm doing a constant speed i will feel it in the wheel but it's not enough that it's actually going to be throwing me all over the place because this is an issue i had if you were to just reset these settings to default your wheel will wobble back and forth and it is not going to be a pleasant experience because you want your wheel to work with you you don't want it to work against you it makes a very big difference you can be the best driver in the world but if your wheel settings are not set up right you are not going to do a good job it just becomes difficult when you have to fight the wheel you want to make sure that the wheel is actually working with you for the last one on the list we have wheel rotation angle i have this one set to 900 because a realistic real car is going to have 900 degrees of wheel rotation angle now i notice a lot of people do like to have this lower maybe like 540 because for drifting it can somewhat make it easier but i think you need to just just go ahead and learn from the very start at 900 because that is what a real car uses. So if you want to maybe get into it and see what you like, start at 540 and work up to 900. But when you ultimately finish off and you know you feel confident in your driving, you need to be running 900 because that is what a real car is. And a huge benefit to having 900 over let's say 540 is you're going to have more control over the wheel because when you can actually turn more but have less output essentially just like a real car um, you have more control because you don't want to turn the wheel ever so slightly and boom you're all the way shooting into the other next lane um, that's just not realistic and that's not what we want but yeah those are the wheel settings if you do enjoy these please do let me know in the comment section down below what do you think of them i think these are very realistic and they definitely do match what i have in horizon 5. now if you try these wheel settings out and they feel a little bit too too lightweight or maybe not enough the first thing i would go ahead and adjust is wheel damper scale i would go ahead and toss this up a few notches and if it still feels like it's a little bit too light what i would do is go ahead and adjust the force feedback scale to go a little bit higher you know maybe even try 50. Um, if you go too high and you start having the wheel wobble back and forth that's just because your settings are too high but with these settings you won't have it wobble back and forth now it might you know feel a little bump here and there but that's just because you literally drive over a bump which is realistic so try that out if you enjoy these settings please do let me know in the comment section down below other than that if you did enjoy the video and want to see many more just like it please do make sure to like comment and subscribe because we're gonna have a whole lot of other educational videos just like this one on the channel we'll see you in the next one